How are we looking? It's not doing anything yet over here. Oh, there we go. It's doing something. It's doing Yay, something. Here we are. I think we're live. Live! It's, there's a, From the bunker. There's a total lag, though. There's a little bit of a lag. That's okay. How's everybody doing? We are uh, here at our... Uh, I think the internet's working. I think we're doing okay. Um, yeah, if the heater kicks on, you may hear a little rumbling in the background. Uh, yeah, maybe. But uh, we're here to uh, answer your questions for the evening. And uh, just, yeah, try to get through this craziness that is the pandemic. And um, yeah, so how are we doing? Any questions? Michael Noyce says howdy. Mike Noyce says howdy. Howdy, Mike Noyce. Uh, I think what I'm gonna start out with is one of my favorite um, uh, solo drills. And one of the things that you can do at home, now we may have to adjust the camera, I'm not sure. Um, but one of the things that I like to do uh, early on to help uh, some attacks from the guard position was um, just a, a position that you can do right here from the ground where you just kind of lay down and you shoot your hips up. So at first, just raising your hips up like this, okay, trying to bring your body up as straight as possible uh, really can help a lot of your guard attacks. The ability to raise your hips up and capture things like triangles and arm locks like that things like that. Really helpful, just being able to do this. At first, you can use your hands like this on the floor. And so if you don't have a partner to train with, this is a really good drill for your core, okay? To develop the ability to reach, shoot your hips up and capture positions. So if I just shoot my hips up like this, that's good. I mean, it, just, just doing a bunch of these is really, really good for your, your core and to help develop the capability to capture the position. So when you see an opportunity, let's say for a triangle, yeah, awesome. <laughs> so let's come over here this way. All right. So if somebody's postured up and I see the opportunity, maybe for a triangle, to be able to shoot my hips up and capture that position as quickly and, and efficiently as possible is really helpful. So that's something you can do at home, um, even without a partner, that can be really, really helpful. So if you start just like this, using your hands and just raising your hips, eventually you can start to change it and you can start to switch your hips a little bit. So you can turn your hips like this. So mimicking like an arm lock motion, okay? And then even a triangle position just like this. So shooting the hips up. And eventually, you're, at first you're, you're just working for developing the core muscles. Um, and little by little, speed will come later, okay? And if you're, if you're doing it by yourself, you start with your hands here. This gives you some stability. You can raise your hips up and hold the position, okay, and then come back down, all right? Um, and then what, once that gets comfortable and you get more, uh, you know, you get stronger and you're able to, to do more, you take your hands off the mat and you use your elbows so that it's this, okay? And try to bring your hips up as high as possible, all right? Bring your body up as straight as you can. And then once you develop a little bit more uh, core strength there and a little bit more control, then take your arms off the mat here and raise your hips up and then come back down, okay? And then try to come up and hold it and then come back down. Try to bring your body up as straight as possible. So it looks very, very um, simple, but if you, if you do a lot of those, it can really, really help your, your ability to capture things like triangles and, and arm locks, things like that. Bring your hips up and meeting positions in the guard is really critical. So for example, I'm gonna let you do the move, actually. Let's have you down here. Let's say um, we're in a situation like this. A very, very basic and standard arm lock. Somebody's reaching forward and trying to choke you like this. The ability to raise your hips up and shoot your hips up into that position is really critical. Look, you see how her hips came up and captured, now her arm, her, sorry, her hips are right where they need to be. Now all she needs to do is grab my wrist and she's got a, you know, a very effective arm lock. And so that movement, it's not very natural at first. If you're um, just getting into jujitsu, that, that drill can really be helpful. So that's something you can do at home that you don't need, um, you don't need a partner for, 
that can really develop your, your, your core strength. How many to do? I'm not really sure. You know, uh, as many as you can, I guess. Um, so, what kind of questions does everybody have out there? If you hear some banging in the background, we have a, a my son is over here changing, uh, changing oil. So, I'm not sure who family food and barbecue is, but he hey, what's Jacob Esses, what's <laughs> up? And family, thank you very much. Hope you all doing well. Eating good. <laughs> Check out their channel, guys. What size mat? Well, what size mat do we have here? Josh, I looked... not Jake. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Josh. That was terrible. <laughs> it's my terrible friend. Um, so this right here, I believe, is a 6 by 12. So it's a 12 by 12 foot space, which is really a, a great space for just um, uh, a couple people. More than that, it gets a little bit crowded. If you're drilling techniques, um, we could have maybe two groups on the mat, but not much more than that. It's it's pretty tight when you start getting more than, than two people on the mat. Here. Well, and rolling around, you hit Yeah, the rolling, you start to move a little bit. And, uh, so Hello it's, a, it's Montana. a- Montana. Hello, how you doing? Beautiful Montana. Kind of wish we were out there right now in the apocalypse. <laughs> All right, so what kind of questions does everybody have? Anything that we can uh, do to help you guys out? I think um, jiu-jitsu is, is one of those things that, sorry, my, I gotta adjust my uh, rash guard. Shameless plug from my awesome sponsors, uh, Fuji, but uh, my belly is getting a little bit big and it's starting <laughs> to ride up after that drill there. So it's sliding my belly. Um, so, um, yeah, kind of lost my train of thought there. Questions. Yes, that? questions. What sort of things uh, have you guys been working on? What sort of things that can we um, answer to help everybody out? I hope everybody's, I know this was a, you know, jujitsu is, is a thing that, that so many people do to kind of relieve stress from their daily lives. And for so many of you out there, it's been ripped away from you. And, you know, from, from our perspective, um, it's, you know, we still have it in our lives. We still have it with each other. We can come out here and... We have a couple questions. Yeah, Are good. Yeah, I'll get um, there. I'm, I'm just trying to throw that out. But it, it's, um, you know, we're just trying to find ways to connect with everybody out there and, and help you um, still find that, that release, find that, that way of, of expressing yourself through jiu-jitsu um, to relieve that stress because it's, it's a stressful time for everybody. Um, you know, I mean, we've had our moments here. I mean, it's, it's been very difficult to kind of just really just overnight shut your business down. And, um, and the thought of the real thought of like, man, this could, this is life changing for so many people. And, uh, I just, yeah, I mean, we have an amazing amount of support from our students and that's incredible. And we're trying to do what we can, things like this to kind of get, uh, to connect with them, answer their questions. Um, and just to the broader community, just just be out there for everybody and, and do what we can do. So stay strong, everybody. Um, I think uh, jiu-jitsu is, is the, the first principle of jiu-jitsu is survival. And we're kind of in that moment right now um, as a culture, as a, as, a, as a human race. We're trying to figure out how to survive this, this thing, um, not just uh, physically, but economically. And um, it's gonna get crazy, but the most important thing is, even if you're stuck in a position where you can't escape. I remember one of my first training partners was uh, like 340 pounds. And when you get side control on me, I couldn't escape. I just, I, I couldn't move. And at first I, I would have that, that sense of panic and I hated it. And then I, I, would, I would listen to what my instructors were saying. I would listen to what Ayla Gracie would talk about. And, and you know, one of the, 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 the things for him is that just, if all you can do is breathe, just breathe, right? They haven't beaten you yet. And that's the thing, it's like right now sometimes we just need to just sit down and, and just breathe. This hasn't beaten us yet and uh, yeah, just survive, you know? So what kind of questions do we have? Number one, we have old school sweeps from the guard. Old school sweeps from the guard, whoa, all right, well, you probably should, yeah. I need a pedicure. 
<laughs> All right. Maybe after we survive this whole thing, maybe we can we can afford a pedicure. Uh, old school sweep. I, I don't think it gets much more old school than than uh, than the scissor sweep. And the scissor sweep is very much. It's 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 almost like the cross choke. I think the cross choke, the standard cross choke, not the modified one. Like you can muscle the modified cross choke. The standard cross choke after white belt. Like you you gotta you know, you gotta learn how to how to get sneaky with it. And I think the same thing is is. Um, same thing can be said for the scissor sweep. The scissor sweep is very much a timing thing and being able to recognize when your opponent is off base and capturing them in that moment. Um, I went to a class with uh, Hicks and Gracie maybe, I don't know, eight or nine years ago. It was my first time actually being able to be on the mat with Hicks and Gracie and it was incredible. And one of the things that he, he showed was, was the scissor sweep and some of the details it kind of brought it out and made it new again. So um, one of the things that's very important about the scissor sweep is making sure that you're capturing your opponent off base at the right time. So to practice this, what we're gonna do, this is an old school sort of uh, way of setting up the sweep. Uh, one of the old school passes was that the person would lift this leg and step it back a little bit so that there was a hole here so they could reach the arm through and go for the old school stack pass, okay? So in this moment of opportunity, when the person goes to lift their leg, let's go back, okay? All right, and Manny's a little bit smaller than me, so I'm gonna do my best here, but when they lift that leg, look right there. At that moment, she's off base. But once the foot lands and it's really solid, now she can kind of set herself back this way. And now she's not as off base, all right? So if I can capture her in that moment, so when she lifts the leg and I move here, now try to put your knee back down. Ah, too late. <laughs> Now I drag my back along the mat. The really important thing here, a lot of people use this modified variation where the, their, their leg is up here like this underneath the armpit. That takes a little bit of strength, okay? But if you capture them off base and my hips are facing toward their, their if you drew a line right, right along my hips here, they should come like this, a little bit past uh, horizontal. Is that horizontal? Vertical? Vertical. You get, yes, you get it, okay? A little bit past this way. Yeah. There you go, that way, all right? But this leg, when it comes across the belly, is angled down towards the mat. I, I gotta make sure that my leg is nice and solid here, that I don't have a, a bend less than 90 degrees. It can get smashed here if I do that. I want this to be like a, a ramp, okay, for her to slide down. Now, I have the right grips. I'm gonna move myself out of the way. I'm gonna make sure that I don't sweep her right into that, that expensive computer. And then we're gonna chop. So the bottom leg goes here. Top leg is gonna knock her over. Boom. And then we come up on top here, okay? And when you're climbing on top, make sure you're digging in with your heel right on top of their leg here. Your bottom foot is digging into the floor. So let's spin this way so everybody can kind of see what I'm doing with my foot. So this foot is gonna dig into the floor and push as I dig with my heel here to raise my hips and make it on top here. All right, so the most important part there, again, is capturing them off base. So let's look at that again. So the way to practice this is, is, is like this. Go ahead and, and lift this leg up. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift my hips up and I'm gonna let, do like a shrimp roll, okay? Off, the, off of her leg. So I'm pressing down with my leg here. I extend my hips up. I rotate up on my shoulder. My hip moves out and now look, look how my leg is here. So if I can capture her at the right moment, that's really how you can really make the, the scissor sweep powerful. It's a, it's a super powerful sweep, but the timing is what makes it effortless. And when you hit a sweep that's effortless, man, like when you hit it at the right time, that's like the drug that keeps you coming back to jujitsu over and over and over again. Um, it's just, it's magic. It's a magical thing. So. You owe it to yourself if you're white belt or blue belt or whatever. If you haven't hit a sweep yet that was completely effortless, you owe it to yourself to, to train long enough to get to that point. If you do, man, it feels awesome. You'll probably never quit. You'll keep chasing it. So. <laughs> um, I have a bunch here. Um, hi, Owen. Owen, what's Owen. up? Owen's going to be excited to see us on the big TV. Yeah. Now you don't have to see my face all the way up in front like the last one. <laughs> and we have some love all the way from the UK. UK, what's up? Surviving um, out there. 
So what kind of conditioning do you recommend for beginners? Conditioning. Well, unfortunately, the best conditioning for grappling is grappling. Um, but until you can do that, think, if, you, if you look up uh, some videos, and I'm sure there's a bunch online right now, I think one of my favorite was um, uh, Gymnastica Naturelle by uh, Alvaro Mano. Uh, I think he studied under the same guy that Hickson did. If you, if you watch the uh, Choke documentary, you'll see Hickson doing some exercises on the beach and at home uh, on the mats that uh, they both uh, studied under a guy named Orlando Cani. Um, and I think um, Alvaro ended up calling it um, uh, Gymnastica Naturale and kind of just went out to the rest of the world and kind of shared that knowledge. But I think as far as grappling goes, solo, solo movement stuff, that's probably the best conditioning stuff that I've seen that mimics the movements and connection that we have in jiu-jitsu. Uh, and just kind of the stuff, all sorts of really crazy cool stuff. Uh, but, you know, I, and I have a, uh, uh, we have a personal trainer now that actually trains with us at the, the academy of our blue belts, uh, Mike Elkins, who writes his workouts. and. They're specifically designed for us to develop the kind of core uh, strength and exercises that, that are required for just staying healthy and fit uh, as a grappler. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there, we do all sorts of different stuff, you know, that, that he writes for us, but some of that is very specific um, to us and, and, and according to our needs. I mean, I have some limitations and mobility issues and, and you know, injuries and things like that, so he, he he does some things that are specific for that, but um, really, I mean, the, the best way to condition for um, grappling, unfortunately, is, is to grapple. I feel you know? it's, it's totally different, too. It's I felt different. like when I first started, I was in average shape, but I found... I would say you're better than average well, shape. But I, I found, average. like, just rolling, like, there were certain muscles that I didn't realize I couldn't use on a regular basis. It's very different, yeah, and uh, it's very difficult to mimic that without the resistance that you get from another human being. Um, but anything that can keep you healthy is going to help you. Um, I mean, a stronger athlete is a better athlete. So weightlifting, if you're doing it properly and not uh, making yourself, you know, not getting injured or anything like that, like if you're doing it properly. I think it's going to be valuable uh, cardio-wise. I think the best way to get it is actually sparring. If you don't have a sparring partner, um, find ways of, of you know developing circuits and things like that that we, where you can keep your cardio, you get your heart rate up, um, just to get your heart in 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 the shape that you need it to. Because when you start sparring with somebody, your heart rate's going to go up. I mean, and that's uh, so it really anything. Um, but you know, one of the favorite quotes I had. I, I was at a seminar once, one of my first Hoist Gracie seminars back when I was a white belt. The guy, some guy asked, like, "Hey, you know, do you like what do you do for conditioning for jujitsu? Do you like swim or do you, you know, we'll run or?" Oh, oh no, that's no good. <laughs> it's not coming through. I don't know. Allison just said the sound. Okay, we'll check it in a second. I'll <laughs> I'll try to continue on what I was saying, but. Um, the hoist looked at the guy and he was just like, do you play basketball to get good at football? <laughs> and what he was saying, he was like, you know, you want to get good at jiu-jitsu, do jiu-jitsu. So let me see if I can correct it. Is everybody having that issue? I don't know. Can All anybody right. else hear us? Testing. One, two. What are the kind of questions? Um, Allison wants to know... Oh, they say we have sound. Okay. Good. Um, Allison wants to know what we're doing at our place to keep our normal. Our normal? <laughs> well. <laughs> Aside from not being at the school, I mean, that's a huge change for us. It's but massive. We were already home, homeschooling our kids. And so that, I mean, yeah. that's been a major shift for a lot of families right now that their kids were normally in school, so we haven't had to deal with that drastic of a, whoa, what do we do now, kids are at home. We Probably not compared home. to most, yeah. I, I would say that for us, you know, my my social interaction uh, came from jiu-jitsu. I, I would tell people all the time, like, I, I, don't, I don't go to bars or anything like that. I don't really 
you know, I, I don't have a, you know, once a month I meet with some friends and we, we have a poker game or something. But for the most part, like, my social interaction is, is my, my tribe of jiu-jitsu. Like, I, I have my family and I have my academy. Um, so the, the people that I have uh, at the academy, that's my social interaction. And that's, I know that's such a difficult situation for so many people because they're, they're like me. Um, so a lot of people, like, you know, they have their, their three places they spend the majority of their time. At home, with their family, if they have a family, at their work. And for most people, it's, it's like a third thing. Um, whether it would be CrossFit or something else, whatever their, their hobby may be. It might be going to a bar, right? They're, that's their release. That's their thing that they, they, they spend their third amount of time with. Um, and, you know, we are... Um, we are, baby. <laughs> yeah, we hear a screaming baby right now. Zayden, can you... Yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, folks, this is live. But I don't get to edit this stuff out. This is what it's like living on the, on the farm with, with eight kids. But... Um, you know, I just, uh, I'm so thankful for the families and the people that, that, that choose our academy as their third thing. And that's typically their release. So it's my social interaction and my job and my release all at the same time. And, you know, luckily I have my amazing family here that I can, I can still do that with. I, can st I still have a space that this is a blessing for us to be able to do this. Um, so my way of connecting and staying normal is doing this right here, is, is, is doing what we can do and just, this is what we can do. Like I just be live on YouTube or Facebook or whatever and just connect with everybody in, in any way that we can. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to, trying to reach out and connect with all of you as much as, 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 we, as we can and just and train here with, with each other as much as possible. So yeah. Um, if anybody has any suggestions, please throw them out there because this is, uh, this is unprecedented territory and, and especially for us who love this art so much. I mean, you know, I, I haven't taken, I don't think I've taken a break longer than this, at least being in the room with, with, with my people, you know, so, um, yeah, we're open to suggestions. This is uncharted territory for, for the Gisela family as well. But we're, we're trying to, right now, I think we're just trying to have movie time with our kids at, at night time. Like, we have chores, we have things, things that we have to do, we still have to work. Um, and um, at night time, we're, we're trying to sit down with everybody and, and, and we're going through the Marvel universe right now. So, I think we're on the fourth movie at this point. So, yeah. Me and the kids have watched most of them. It's new to her, so. I was always going to stay home with the youngest <laughs> kid, whoever that was at the time, while the rest of them went off to the theater. So. Yeah, so we're just trying to make ourselves busy and, and do what we can to prepare for anything that can that can come up. I mean, it, it's crazy. We, we planted some seeds today for, for a garden. Um, who knows how crazy things are gonna get. So we're doing our best to prepare for the unknown. And, and uh, yeah, I think we're, we're probably better prepared than most people, but still need to do more and so that's what we're doing we're trying to keep ourselves busy by just doing what we can do and um and first just breathe i can't escape the side control i'm getting smashed by a 350 pound dude and guess what i think the country is and the and the and the world really at large is being crushed under a 340 pound well maybe bigger than that so the first thing we have to do is breathe and stay calm and then Wait for the opportunity, and then we escape. You know, so. Alan wanted to know if you had any other triangle tips. Triangle tips. I have a lot of triangle tips. I'm actually putting together. That was part of my plan to put together an entire uh, video series on triangle, um, the triangle in general. So uh, the finish is is different with in the counter to. I mean, there's just so much to it. I mean, it's we're talking hours long of, of video content. If there's anything specific that you had in, in, in mind, um, I, can, I can help you with it. But uh, I think the most important detail that I could share with anybody when it comes to the triangle is the, the, the final squeeze. So I'm gonna show that. And at some point I'm gonna put out a DVD, but this is probably the most important detail I probably shouldn't show everybody, but I'm gonna, all right? So this is it, the triangle itself. It's a position all in, it, 
in itself. I mean, th there's, there's so many things you can do in this position. You can arm lock, you can thrust choke, you can wrist lock, you can shoulder lock. There's just a million things. It's a position all in itself. I mean, there's a ton of submissions and things that you can do. But at the core of it is this choke, okay? And it's with the legs. And it's such a powerful position for us in jiu-jitsu, being on the bottom. It's one of the most powerful chokes that we have. So this right here, I need to make that connection to the neck here, right to the side of the neck. The most, I think one of the most common problems that we see when people go to adjust, when they go to pull this arm across and they go to move their body, is they leave a lot of space here, okay? Don't, don't give up that space. But when they go to adjust, instead of turning in line here like this, they turn like this. And what happens is this that part of the leg, I'm sure it does. <laughs> this moves away, the knee drops, and people lose that connection to the neck. So what you really need to do is come here, make sure that this is nice and tight. That tendon should cut right into the side of the carotid here. This part of your leg should be on the back of the neck. I, I need to cover her shoulder with my thigh, okay? So if I'm here like this, now most people say, when they say, you know, to finish the choke, they say squeeze the knees together and pull the head, okay? Um, and that's very, you know, that, that's, it works. It, it's not that it doesn't, it's not that it's bad advice, but the, let, the muscles that squeeze your knees together are not nearly as strong as the hamstring, okay? So if you squeeze your knees together like this, I'm using the, the thigh master muscles, right? Was that Suzanne Summers? <laughs> yeah, the thigh master muscles. I can squeeze like this. It's, sorry, it's, right. it's still effective, right? But what's stronger than the thigh master muscles? The hamstrings. So if, I'll take you out so I don't choke you, choke you so much. All right, so if I'm connected to my, my leg here and my toes are up, okay? When I pull my heels down and away, look what happens to that space. The legs will still naturally, the knees and the legs will still naturally come together, but now you're utilizing the hamstrings as opposed to just the thigh master muscles. The adductors, is that what? Yes, there you go. Technical term. I'm not a doctor, sorry. So if I have that, this is much more powerful. And I'm not even using, I'm not even using those muscles there. I'm just pulling my heels down and away. But it's important that your toes are up. If your foot is like this, this is gonna slide off, okay? You don't want that. It's actually gonna be dangerous to your foot. So even again, I know I don't have a very, very large person here. She's much smaller than me. But if I had a thicker person and I couldn't make the figure four, as long as I cover that shoulder, look at this. I can still do it with her. But my toes up. I would rather have this than this with my toes down, okay? Because here, I'm covering her shoulder. What I really need, I already have the connection over here. What I need is for this shoulder to go into her neck, okay? So when I go here like this, I still get the same effect, okay? So even if it gets a much larger person, that's the, that's the, even though I'm a tall person, I have long legs and I can try it with most people, but I don't have to have a full figure four to make the choke work, okay? One of the best triangulars I've ever seen was, uh, you know, at, back when I first, you know, started and, and was getting into it was, was Barry Yoshida. He had an amazing triangle. The guy's like five foot nothing. He's got short legs, but he could triangle guys way, way bigger than him. So you don't need long legs to have a good triangle. Jacob Carpenter is wanting to know any tips on patience, especially when rolling. Patience. He's a later stage blue belt. So Jacob, thanks for the question. Um, Patience is just one of those things that just, it's, it takes a, a conscious effort. And the first thing that you have to do is really just take yourself out of the, the mindset of, I need to tap him or, or I'm going to get, you know, I need to not get caught. You need to explore. You need to just play. Um, and patience will come as a, as a result of just, just really being in the moment. Like you're in somebody's guard. You don't have to pass. Right? You have to survive. Okay, that's your first mindset, right? Is, is survival. So not feeling you, like you have to do something, right? There's a, just like we were talking earlier about being stuck on the bottom in side control, right? Against somebody who's got really good pressure. You don't have to escape that person. You have to survive it. You have to survive the position first. That's the objective. And when you can do that little by little, so find those positions where you're stuck and you can't do anything, 
And just don't do anything except for breathe and survive and do what you need to do. That's it. Um, that's the best way to, to, to develop the patience, I think. Um, if that's the, if that's, I hope that answers your question effectively. I have another one from uh, Steve asking, when you started and what was it like and what kind of moves were taught? <laughs> so I started in 1994. Uh, as far as I can tell, it was, it's, it's been a long time. I was trying to track down the exact date. Um, but I can't really, I can't remember, but it, right around that time, um, the first UFC that I watched live, uh, if I, if I remember correctly, was UFC four. And, uh, yeah, that, that, that fight changed my life. When I saw Hoist, uh, beat somebody who was 80 pounds heavier than him, much bigger, much stronger, uh, a good wrestler, the guy who just, who just annihilated, um, two guys that were bigger than Hoist. And just just wiped him out, just just blew him away in, in the first and second round. He fought Dan Severn in, the, in that third match, and I, I thought, and the, the whole match I, I watched that 15 minutes and 49 seconds long. I, I watched that thing. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. A guy is built like me, and he was surviving under this guy who was just this mountain of a man, just big and huge, and just just killed these other two guys so so fast. I was just mesmerized. I thought. This guy's hoist is gonna tap out any second. I can't believe what I'm seeing. And next thing you know, Severn's tapping out to the triangle. We just, you know, we just kind of talked about. Um, and I, that was it. Like I had to learn this. I, I, I just, I was always a fan of martial arts. Like grew up on a on a farm. I never had the means or the for the the opportunity to to train. But I always wanted to find my Mr. Miyagi. Right and, and learn how to defend myself and I'm a small kid who just got picked on a little bit and and I uh, always wanted to learn how to do it and when I saw Hoist do that and I knew I had the opportunity to learn I nothing could stop me and um, yeah I, I I just I was hooked right from that moment uh, everything else was on the back burner like I, I just put everything else in my life on hold like, I had to learn this and. I'm so thankful. Like it, my life has taken a totally different direction than um, I, I think it would have, and it's been a healthy thing for me. It's a healthy thing for anybody. But the types of techniques that were taught, I'll say this: uh, um, even though we don't allow them at certain levels at our academy, I, I no kidding. I think every fifth move taught was a neck crank. <laughs> I don't think I don't think I've taught her one neck crank yet, but. Um, that was, a, that was a very popular move back then. Um, and uh, we kind of discouraged them from daily practice because they can be really damaging, you, but you have to know them. Uh, so it was, it was a little bit rougher back then. I, I, I didn't even know there were, there were competitions. Like I trained for at least a year before I even realized like there were competitions for this stuff. I remember uh, I was in a seminar with Helson and, and he starts talking in his broken English about that. Ah, two points for this and three points for this and blah, blah. And I leaned to the guy next to me and I'm like, what's he talking about? Is this some sort of game? Like, what are we doing? Like, are we going to play a game here in a minute? And he's like, no, no, no. He's talking about the rules for competition. I'm like, competition? I'm like, oh, wow. Like, you can, you can compete in this stuff with, like, just like we spar, like, without punches? And they're like, yeah. Like, no punches, no head butts. I'm like, oh, sign me up. I'm in. Like, this, this sounds great. So everything back then was really geared. Like, I signed up because it worked in a fight against a much larger, stronger opponent with really minimal rules. And uh, so I knew it was effective and that's, that's, that's the type of techniques that were taught. Like, how do you defend yourself first? Like, how, how do you close a distance against somebody who wants to strike with you, which is the most common type of aggression? And how do you stay safe when you're stuck on the bottom and escape worst case scenarios? And that's, uh, yeah, those were the type of techniques that were taught. Just same things that we teach today. Right? I think there's updated information and it gets better and it's improving. And I've learned things from here and then here that I like. Like, oh, that's really good. I, I like that a little bit better. I've learned things from Helson over the years that he's improved on that are better than what he showed us 20 years ago. Um, so really the philosophy is still the, the same, okay? At least for us, uh, it's self-defense first. And the techniques will be, they will still innovate and they will still improve. Um, but, but they have to improve it in, in, in that mindset first and then, uh, everything else kind of falls in. So, all right, Jeremy wants to know your favorite arm bar transition from the back mount. From the back mount. 
arm bar transition from the back mount. Okay, so I have a couple. Um, from the back mount. So this is probably the standard uh, situation from the back mount where you switch and you come here and you push the chin. Like This is really important. When I fall to this side like this and I push the chin. Pushing the chin is, is, is critical because if I don't push the chin and I just block here, she can turn into me and then end up coming on top. Okay, so now I'm in the guard. I'd rather make sure that if I'm going to give up the back mount, I want to make sure that I have the arm. So when I come here, I want to turn her chin. Now it's very difficult for her to turn her body to face me. Now this leg can come over top and push her down and come here. That's probably the standard one. My favorite, honestly, is actually from the strong side. So switching and coming here and tucking the arm here like this. So here when I push and I switch my body, I'm gonna come here and I have the arm tuck arm lock where I keep my elbow pitched tight to my ribs and I, all I have to do here is just squeeze my knees. And now that's, <laughs> you're feeling it, you okay? All right, you didn't wanna hurt your arm. I'm bendy. Yes, you are very bendy, yes. <laughs> Most people tap by then. But that's my favorite where you kind of that arm tuck arm lock where you drag the elbow down along your, your side here and squeeze it tight because it's much more difficult to defend. So I prefer catching the arm lock on that side. We're going to just skip the next one because... What's the next one? Laura wants to know something. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, no. Good friend of mine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she said, I was sweeping her immediately when I was, when she was in my guard. What's the best way to maintain base? while I'm someone's guard? Is there a stabilization drill for being in someone's guard? Okay, so she I guess- knows there's one for mount and practice, it definitely helps maintain that. So what did you sweep her with? I, I guess that's the-, the <laughs> I don't remember. You don't remember? No. Does Lara remember? Do you remember which sweep you got caught with? Was it hip bump sweep? Because, uh, let's- well, while we figure out what that was, let's let's show everybody how to stop the hip bump sweep. The hip bump sweep is maybe the most uh, common sweep in jiu-jitsu. In the guard position, please. So here, if she's holding on to me, she sits up and she pulls her hand, okay? And she reaches over, grabs my arm, she posts the foot on the floor, and then she bridges her hips. It's very powerful, too late for me. She continues going, she drives her knee to the floor, I'm going over, okay? So this is a little bit late, all right? Um, now, granted, it's not always easy to catch this sweep uh, like this uh, without the self-defense perspective because people are, are blocking like this. The problem here is that when people start to reach up like this and they sit up, come up the elbow first, and they sit up and they try to push, what happens is if I really want to shut her down, I have to push like this to push her down, and then she can pull this across, and now she can walk her legs up, and now I'm giving up the arm. Okay, or my neck or whatever. So we don't want to counter it by pushing back into them. Obviously, we don't want them sitting up into us in this situation in the first place. But if you time it right, go ahead and cross your feet again. Okay, even if my hands are on the inside and she has a hand on the collar and she wants to punch this back, when she sits up to go, as soon as she opens the guard, instead of pushing into her or, or like pushing her back, okay, all I want to do here, go ahead and lift your is lift my hips. Okay, so that way I'm not exposing my arm to pushing her back down. All I'm doing, I'm countering the hips with the hips, okay? So if you're ever stuck in that position, if you time it right, and this gives you a great opportunity to pass the guard, because the guard's open now, okay? So when they lift, ah, as soon as they open the guard, I counter the hips with my hips. Now put me, put me back in the guard. Too late, and now I can pass. So this is a good opportunity for you when you notice that they're sitting up and they're gonna try that, Okay, um, that's a great way to shut down the hip bump sweep. So, the best way, honestly. Okay. We got time for maybe, what time is it? it, it I don't know. We don't get it too long. It's 6.39. Okay, so we got one, time for one more question, folks. Um, cool, uh, that's an answer to the other one. I don't know if I'm still doing new stuff. This could be all, all shut down already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's up the year. <laughs> That's all right. Um, well, we can, we can close it out. That's fine. We, we will do many more uh, um, oh, okay. questions on. and answers Alan's from the back. Alan says, can you bait them by sitting up into them? 
um, as they attempt to hit golf sweep? Absolutely. I do it all the time. Um, I don't want the person to sit up in the first place. So if we're in the guard here, like I don't, I don't want her to sit up, and I don't. I definitely don't want to cross like this. This gives her the, the angle that she wants. So I need to pay attention to the center line and make sure that my arms aren't crossing. So if she sits up wherever the lifting point is, that same side arm is going to block. And you're looking at it right now, and you're saying, "Oh yeah, you're like a foot taller than Mandy, of course." But if we switch, let's switch. Let's have you on the team. Okay. Pay attention to the posture. Okay. So what she wants to avoid is my hand going deep in the collar. So if she blocks with it, yes, because her posture is up and I'm laying down, she doesn't have to have as long of an arm as I do. She's already protected from getting, getting deep, deep in the arm, okay? What she doesn't want is this. She doesn't want this arm to come across here because now this gives me the angle to take her back or, or, or bring the arm across. So if that makes sense, number one, like you don't want them to get deep like that. But if they end up doing something, another variation, you can all, this is your first clue. It's for them to, they sit up to the elbow and maybe even they have a hand on the collar like this. But as soon as they sit up to go like this, that's when you're gonna lift the hips and you can counter. You're gonna block their hips with your hips. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense and answered your question there. You guys are awesome. Um, stay safe out there. Um, Stay connected with each other, with your jiu-jitsu family, wherever you're at in the UK. Everybody that's tuned in, we really appreciate you. Uh, we're going to do more of these. I'll, I'll keep putting them up. Like, subscribe, all that, good, you know, all that stuff that uh, we normally talk about. Uh, so that you get the um, notifications. And uh, yeah, I mean, hope some of that was helpful. Um, I don't, I don't uh, normally do these at all. Usually, I, I cut out all the stupid stuff that I say and edit it and <laughs> color correct it and all that stuff. But it is what it is, folks. I mean, I just want to connect with everybody as much as possible. And this is where we have the most amount of followers is on YouTube. We're cl closing in on 30,000 subscribers, and we appreciate all of you. Um, and just keep in mind, like, what I was talking about before, like, the, the ability for us to survive, right? Um, Already, if you're a jiu-jitsu student, you have a, um, a different mentality than the average public. And um, utilize that. Dive into it, you know. Um, and survive this thing. And help other people survive. This is going to be very difficult, right? But, man, like the quote from Hickson, like, sometimes you can't win. There's, uh, I, I'm going to butcher it. Uh, but it has nothing to do with, with, with losing, right? Um, I'll, I'll post it in the comments later. I'm, I'm totally butchering it. But you guys get the idea is that if, if you can't win, just don't lose, right? And uh, do what you can on, on your end to stay healthy, stay fit, keep your mind active. Um, think positive. If you're at home with loved ones, hug them. If you're not, call them. Tell them you love them, you know? Do what you can to stay connected with each other and... and um, and yeah, and just survive, breathe. And we'll all get through it, and we'll have some great stories on the other end. And uh, yeah, hopefully I can answer some of your questions in the meantime. So um, stay safe out there, folks, and we'll see you soon. Is that it? Yeah. All right, let's turn right it now. off up there. I'll go get it. You got it? I got it. You sure? Yep. Okay. I don't know how to do it. Hit stop. <laughs> Where's the stop button?